Good uh, morning, everyone, and welcome to our Sunday morning service, our joint service between St. Peter's here at Stanley and St. Paul's in Alpenthorpe. A very big welcome to you all. Again, we're continuing in our season of Trinity, uh, and it's a great time of the year when we are able to explore in quite considerable detail um, the idea of the Holy Spirit uh, being part of uh, God with Jesus the Son and God the Father. Um, so lots of things to look forward to in the coming weeks uh, and do have a think about some of the things that we say, some of the sermons that you get and some of the readings because they're all building up about this relationship that we have with God, the three in one. So we're going to begin with a greeting. The Lord be with you. Now we're going to sing our first song, but before we sing that song, I'm just going to tell you a little something. One or two people have said, uh, they love the singing, they think the songs are great, they love to hear uh, Ellie and the others uh, singing, but they were a little bit concerned that um, they would be together. Were, were they managing to, you know, socially distance and all this kind of thing? Well, uh, yes is the answer to that, and I'll tell you why. Because Ellie records the music, uh, and then separately, Ellie and the others all record the singing along to the music, and then Jason does the magic of bringing all this together. So we have uh, a lovely song that sounds like we're kind of together and singing it as one, but actually, they're all separate. So I don't think that's very clever. I think it's great. Do a marvellous job. So we're now going to sing our first song. Jesus is the name we are.
I always like that one. That's a nice song, that Jesus is the name that we honor. So now we're going to say um, our preparation words. We're going to prepare today for what's going ahead. So, God the Father, who has spoken to us through these scriptures, open our ears and hearts to hear your word. God the Son, who saved the world by the power of this cross, strengthen us to follow you. Now we're going to light the candles, remind us of the Trinity, of the Father, of the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. God the Holy Spirit, who revealed yourself to the disciples as a living flame, set us on fire with your love. Blessed are you, Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with us today. Amen. And now we're going to say our words of preparation together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open and all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And of course, as we remind ourselves every week, as hard as we may try, we are far from perfect. But the, Jesus, but the death of Jesus on the cross and the love of God and the spirit within us means that we can come to Christ and we can ask in true repentance to be forgiven of our sins. So God the Father forgives us in Christ and heals us by the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore put away all anger and bitterness, all slander and malice, and confess our sins to God our Redeemer. We say together, Almighty God, we confess that we have sinned against you, for we have denied your saving presence in our lives, and we have grieved your Holy Spirit. Come to us in the fire of your love, and set our minds on the things of the Spirit, that we may bear his fruit in love and joy and peace, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So may the Father forgive you by the blood of the Son and strengthen you to live in the power of the Spirit all your days. Amen. And of course, as we would normally do, uh, we have a special prayer for today, our collect, and we're going to say this prayer together. Lord, you have taught us that all our doings without love are worth nothing. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts the most excellent gift of love, the true bond of peace and of all virtues, without which whoever lives counted dead before you. Grant this for your only Son, Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now today, we're actually going to have two readings, a little more like we would normally do. And the first reading is taken from Paul's letters to the Corinthians, chapter 13, and this will be read by Marian Florence. The reading comes from Paul's letter to the Corinthians, chapter 13, and reading the whole chapter. Love. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, 
it is not proud. It does not dishonour others. It's not self-seeking. It's not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror, then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three things remain, faith, hope and love. But the greatest of these is love. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Marian, for your reading today of the whole of chapter 13, Corinthians. Well done. And our gospel reading uh, today is taken from Luke's gospel uh, and is going to be read by Shai. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke 15, verses 11 to 32. Jesus went on to say, There was once a man who had two sons. The young one said to him, Father, give me my share of the property now. So the man divided his property between his two sons. After a few days, the younger son sold his part of the property and left home with money. He went to a country far away, where he wasted his money in reckless living. He spent everything he had. Then a severe famine spread over that country and he was left without a thing. So he went to work for one of the citizens of that country, who sent him out to his farm to take care of the pigs. He wished he could fill himself with the bean pots that the pigs ate. At last he came to his senses and said, All my father's hired workers have more than they can eat, and here I am about to starve. I will get up and go to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against God and against you. I am no longer fit to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired workers. So he got up and started back to his father. He was still a long way from home when his father saw him. His heart was filled with pity and he ran and threw his arms around his son and kissed him. Father, the son said, I have sinned against God and against you. I am no longer fit to be your son. But the father called his servants. Hurry, he said, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and shoes on his feet. Then go get the prized calf and kill it. Let us celebrate with a feast. For my son, the son of mine was dead, but now he is alive. He was lost, but now he has been found. And so the feasting began. In the meantime, the elder son was out in the field. On his way back, when he came close to the house, he heard, music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him, what's going on? Your brother has come back home, the servant answered, and your father has killed the prized calf, because he got him back safe and sound. The elder brother was so angry that he could not go into the house. To his father, sorry, so his father came out and begged him to come in. But he answered his father, look, all these years I've worked for you like a slave, and I've never disobeyed your orders. What have you given me? Not even a goat for me to have a feast with my friends. But this son of yours wasted all your property on prostitutes, and when he comes home, you kill the prized calf for him. My son, said the father, you are always here with me, and everything I have is yours. But we have to celebrate and be happy, because your brother was dead, but now is alive. He was lost, but now he's been found. This is the Gospel of Christ. 
Thank you, Shelley, for today's gospel reading. And today's word is going to be brought to us by Vicky. Good morning. I suspect that today a lot of people have received cards and presents. These gifts might have been given face to face. They might have been received through the post. Or they might have been left on the doorstep with a chat and a wave through the window. But whatever, all these gifts and cards would have been given in love. Got a few presents here that I'd like to show you, just to illustrate the different categories that presents might fall into. And first of all, we're going to look at some presents which are useful. So the first thing I've got is a hammer. Hammer, very useful object, but not really sure if this particular one will get much use because it says, my granddad can mend anything, love from Holly. So I think that's a bit special and might not get used. The next thing which is useful is a potato peeler. And yes, once upon a time, I was given a potato peeler as a present. I don't think it was even as posh as this one. I think it was just plain black. Then we have a group of presents that are associated with our hobbies and our interests. Things like this beautiful cross stitch kit, which looks quite complicated, but has got a really good chart with it. So at some point, I'm going to enjoy starting to sew that or a book, not sure that I would enjoy reading it but David does, or a cookery book associated with a favourite television programme. Then of course we have presents that are fun, things like build your own tractor, quite enjoy doing that as well. Or knit an owl. Now I'm feeling really quite proud of myself because I have almost finished the knitting and I haven't had to ring Sue Biltcliffe up once to get me out of a mess. So anybody who watches Wednesday or Friday evening prayer might at some point in the future see a completed owl. Then there are those presents which are expensive, perhaps like a piece of jewellery, or a really quite cheap, like hair bobbles, which actually at the moment are very, very precious and worth their weight in gold or more. And then finally, we've got presents which are very, very, very special. Presents that we wouldn't ever want to lose. Things like a grandad box with a logo on the front and painted beautifully. Or a grandma box with little hearts on the top and also painted beautifully. Now the readings that I've chosen today seem to fit quite well. But I'd like to read something before I start to talk about that second reading from this book called A Barrel of Fun. And it's a book of quotes collected by J. John and Mark Stibb and the people from St. Peter's might have heard several of them before because it's something that I use and enjoy using very much. This is called Fathers. The Spanish have a story about a father and son who became estranged. The son left home and the father later set out to find him. He searched for months and months with no success. Finally, in desperation, the father turned to the newspaper for help. His ad simply read, Dear Paco, Meet me in front of this newspaper office at noon on Saturday. 
all is forgiven. I love you, your father. On Saturday, 800 young men named Paco showed up looking for forgiveness and love from their estranged fathers. So the story from Luke is perhaps one of the best known stories in the Bible, one of the best known parables. And often this parable is used to illustrate the need for repentance and forgiveness in order to enter the kingdom of heaven. But I would like to use it in another way. So the story goes, the man had two sons. The oldest one was a grafter, working hard for his dad and loyally staying at the family home. But the younger son had a roaming spirit and wanted to get away. He wanted to see the world. He wanted to spread his wings. But of course he needed some cash to do that. So he asks his dad for his share of the property. Traditionally, if a man was to gift something during his lifetime, he gave capital and not income, which he retained. So dad gave his young son capital and the young son wanted to use that capital straight away. Off he went with money in his pocket and the whole world in front of him. But unfortunately, the freedom and the money went straight to his head. And after a very short time, it spent up. Now, unfortunately, also for him, was a famine occurred at the same time. So even though he tried to find help from people, nobody wanted to help him. They were too concerned with helping their own family, trying to make their own ends meet. So he tried to get a job. And once again, unfortunately, the only job that he could get was that offered by a man who said he could feed his pigs. Now, he must have been very, very desperate because pigs to the Jews were very distasteful. They were unclean animals. They should be avoided. But he was still hungry. He was so hungry, in fact, that he said he would have eaten the carob seeds which the pigs ate, but he wasn't given any. So I wonder how long it was before he realised that he couldn't go on like that. He was going to have to man up and go back home. He worked out what he was going to say when he saw his father. He would acknowledge the fact that he was a sinner. He had sinned against God and against his father. He realised that things would never be the same again. But he was prepared for that if his father would let him work, give him a living wage and somewhere to sleep. But it wasn't like that, was it? Because from a distance, his father saw him coming along the road. And such was his joy that he ran to meet him. He threw his arms round him and he kissed him. Now, as an older man, it was not the done thing to be running around. And shouldn't he really have found out what the son had to say for himself before he forgave him in such an obvious way? The son did manage to tell him that he was sorry that he knew it sinned, that it sinned against God and it sinned against his father. But his father probably didn't hear. He was too overjoyed to have his son back. He was too busy sending the servants off to bring robes and shoes and to get a sumptuous feast prepared. The father thought he'd lost his son forever and his joy knew no limits now that he'd got him back. But not everybody was pleased. The older, reliable, 
hard-working and loyal son was angry. He'd never had such a fuss made of him. He'd never been rewarded with such a wonderful banquet. And after all he'd done to keep the family small holding going, and so he refused to go into the house. But his father loved both his sons equally, and just as he'd gone out to meet his wayward son, he went out to meet and to plead with his older son. The father's love for both his sons was sacrificial. They were his world. His love for both his sons was limitless, as he tells his firstborn that all that is mine is yours. The younger son hit rock bottom before he truly knew the love of his father. But we do not need to hit rock bottom to know and to experience the love that God has for us. The love of God is shown through the sacrificial giving of his son for our sake. And I think that's how this ties together with gifts. Because the greatest gift ever was the gift of God's love to us in Jesus, his son. God's love does not waver. It's us who wavers. It's us who let suffering become more real than the steadfast love of God. God's love reached out to all of us from the cross as Jesus hung there. That love is constant and true. And when we stray, that love is there waiting for us to turn back. Let's just put aside the reports of demonstrations and marches which have marred the news recently. Let's put aside the bad relationships which have led to unrest and disturbances. And let's focus on the wave of love that has swept our nation over the last three months. The wave of love that has kept mothers from their children as they fight to win the battle against COVID-19. The wave of love that has put so many at the mercy of this virus as they strive manfully for their patients. The wave of love that has seen volunteers preparing meals and delivering them to those who are shielding. The wave of love that, has all, that, that all those who shop and befriend the isolated have shown. And so this list goes on. Archbishop Vincent Nichols of the Catholic Church said in his homily last Sunday on the radio that it was love for our fellow man that it kept the churches closed to keep people safe, even though it was hard not to be able to enter them. He was, of course, talking about the Catholic Church, but it's just the same for every place of worship, every religion, every faith, every denomination, every place of worship, be it any temple, mosque, synagogue, gurdwara or church. Places of worship have been kept closed because of our love for other people and wanting to keep them safe. So let us give thanks for the steadfast and unswerving love of God that will keep us strong and resolute as we continue to strive to play our part in winning the battle to defeat this virus. That steadfast and answering love that is God's best gift ever in Jesus. So happy Father's Day. Amen. Thank you very much, Vicky, for your words today. Now we have a time where we can uh, affirm our faith in Jesus Christ and our love for one another, as we say together. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. We believe in God the Father, who created all things, for by his will they were created and have their being. We believe in God the Son who was slain. 
for with his blood he purchased us for God, from every tribe and language, from every people and nation. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, the Spirit and the Bride say come. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Amen. And now it's time for our prayers of intercession. They're going to be brought to us today by Dave Florence. Over to you, Dave. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for reminding us today that you are our Father. Thank you that as our Father, you have given us the gift of love through Jesus Christ. We are aware, Lord, that there are many people who feel broken or hurt because of the lack of a loving father. We remember them especially this Father's Day. We ask Lord that you'll show them your love and your acceptance. We pray for all fathers that you'll show us how to be better fathers, how to show your fatherly love to our children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray about the events of this week. Lord, we pray that as we look as the lockdown is relaxed, you will protect and help us as we begin to meet together again in different ways. We pray, Lord, that you'll guard against those bad relationships, unrest and disturbances that have begun to surface at times. And we ask that instead, this wave of love that started in the lockdown will continue into this second phase and beyond into what we refer to as getting back to normal. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray about what that normal might be in the future. We thank you, Lord, that we can look forward to a world where, can we cut that and start again? And we pray about what that normal might be in the future. We thank you, Lord, that we can look forward to a world when this virus is under control. We thank you for medical advances and new drugs and treatments and tests. We thank you for the beneficial events effects we've seen in the environment. And we pray for the maintenance of clean air and less pollution. But Lord, we also pray for those who have lost jobs, futures and loved ones. And Lord, we pray for the government workers, charities, volunteers and clergy who will need to be going around picking up the pieces after this crisis is over. We pray for wisdom and guidance and strength for them as they face this task. And finally, I'd like to finish with a prayer written by Irene Smithson from St Paul's. She read this to our Bible study uh, last Monday and I thought it'd be good for us to close this prayer time with her prayer. So uh, here's Irene's prayer. We love you Lord with all our hearts. Please give us the strength to play our part. Open our eyes let us see where and what we are meant to be. Open our ears, help us to listen so that we can obey and continue your mission. Open our hearts, Lord, free us from sin. Help us show others the way to come in. Please give us wisdom and discernment and also the insights of your kingdom. Thank you, Lord, for your love and protection and keep us going in the right direction. Amen. 
Thank you for your prayers today, Dave. And we're now going to continue in a time of prayer as we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now we have our time to share the peace. One day, not too far perhaps, hopefully, we may be able to find this, that we can do it in a more traditional way of shaking hands and hugging one another when the world is a safer place. But we're going to say the words together today and then there'll be the usual little video clips at the end uh, for us to share with those around us. So peace to you from God our Heavenly Father. Peace from his Son Jesus Christ who is our peace. Peace from the Holy Spirit, the life giver. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Peace be with you from Kevin, Angela and all the family at St Peter's in Stanley. Peace be with you from James and Charlotte, St Paul's Alderthorpe. Peace be with you from Anne at Stanley St Peter's. Peace be with you from Hermione and Angela at St Paul's Alderthorpe and St Peter's Stanley. Now we have some notices today, but uh, just before we get on to those uh, notices, there's just a little something I'd like to, uh, a couple of points I'd like to make, if I may. One is that very recently, um, on the 6th of June, um, we kind of talked about it loosely, but we didn't really mention it a great deal. Uh, it was Glenn's anniversary, one whole year that he's been serving uh, in the United Benefits. Uh, and it's just a wonderful time. If you didn't already know that, then, um, you know, send him a big well done and a big thank you. I personally would like to thank Glenn for all the help he's given and all the support he's given. And Angela too, because Angela's played a big part. Uh, she tells him which tie to put on and which shirt she should wear and that kind of thing. So um, a big thank you to Angela too. So a whole year that Glenn's been with us, I, I bet, I bet anything really, that when Glenn arrived, he did not expect what we've just been through and are continuing to go through. But we are there by the grace of God. So thank you very much, Glenn, for being with us and being part of us. And I also want to say a big thank you to uh, Jason uh, and to Dave Florence and there are others too um, involved in putting all of this together. Um, we record these various little sections all by themselves and then Jason puts them together and turns it into this beautiful service that you're watching now. Uh, so a big thank you when you get an opportunity to Jason, Dave Florence and, and the others, and of course Glenn and, and Vicky, readers, um, and preachers, and people doing the prayers, people doing the uh, readings and all that kind of thing. Without you, this wouldn't happen. So thank you, a personal thank you to all of you for the work that you've done. Now, I'm not aware that there are any birthdays this weekend. However, here is a notice board. Well, I'm hoping you can see a notice board. I don't know I can't, but hopefully you can. If there's any birthdays on it, happy birthday. Well done. Don't know how you kept it quiet. If there isn't any birthdays on it, well, happy birthday anyway. Who cares? It's absolutely fine. But as usual, the notices are... Um, some of them are up here. Most of it is available on the United Benefits website or on St. Peter's website and the other websites. Please do go and have a look. There are still the um, day events and the evening prayers and such things that are going on as we have done for many weeks now. They're all available through the United Benefits website. Please do go and look uh, and join in as the time permits. Don't forget, some of them are live. 
uh, and some of them uh, are not, but either way, you can watch them pretty much any time after they've gone out live. So you can watch them as many times as you'd like. And thank you all once again for those that are involved in those things. So do stay in touch with us and do keep an eye on what's happening, especially in the coming weeks as we're now moving closer and closer to a possibility at some point in the future where we might have to change things within the church and we might be able to meet together. Little way off yet, but it's heading that way. So now we're going to sing our second song. Again, this is a song that um, I, I love, but as I've said before, I tend to love all of them, so I'll get a bit carried away. But this is a lovely song, and it's In Christ Alone. I hope you enjoyed that. I certainly did. Now we've reached the end of our service together. But before a final blessing, just a reminder that nothing can separate us from God. Really cannot. It's not possible to separate us from God. Even when we might turn our back on him, 
He doesn't turn his back on us. So if ever you fear that your strength is waning, that your belief is troubled, that you're confused about some of the things that's happening in your relationship with God, then that's okay. Because God loves us no matter what. And even though we might struggle, he waits patiently. And then when we're ready, he comes with open arms to draw us back to himself. So now our blessing and our final words. To God the Father who loved us and made us accepted in the Beloved. To God the Son who loved us and loosed us from our sins by his own blood. To God the Holy Spirit who spread the love of God abroad in our hearts. To the one true God be all love and all glory for time and for eternity. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Now we go in the peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining us. God bless.